Hello everyone, welcome to Capture One in One Minute, where we explore one feature of Capture One to make your workflow better and easier. We are continuing examining the export options, and we're going to take a look at the next really important thing, which is export format and size. So remember, we make a new recipe, uh, how we want a particular image to be created as a variant, and that's going to include very explicitly where it goes and what we do with it. Inside of here, we're going to find the really crucial aspects of a variant. We're going to first find the format. And so the most common thing that people export is a JPEG. We have JPEG Quick Proof, which is used in a couple applications, not a lot. We have the very large TIFF files. If you have a very large production, you need to do. We have the digital negative. If we want to be able to read it as a new type of raw file for working with an Adobe application, we have PNGs to be able to use uh, inside of projects that we're building and we have Photoshop documents. So most commonly we see JPEG and TIFF. As I said in a previous video, you can export the Photoshop documents or of course you can take your image, right click, edit with and just simply open it in Adobe Photoshop and it will create the PSD for you there. Once we have a format that is able to change in quality, so for instance, if we're in TIFF, we cannot slide the quality, we get a compressed or uncompressed option. But if we have the ability to change the quality, it's going to be inside of here. We also, with some formats, have the ability to change uh, the bit rate. So we, it, right now a JPEG is of course going to be 8 bits, so the number of colors in red, green, and blue channels is 2 to the 8th power, but with some things we have the ability to do 8 bit or 16 bit, like with a TIFF file. 16 bit is just a much broader range of colors, and that's actually what that number means if you didn't know. 8 bit means the number of shades of red, green, and blue respectively is 2 to the 8th power, and 16 bit is 2 to the 16th power. So it's a pretty large difference in uh, amount of color shades that can be adjusted. All right, next we are going to get what's called the ICC profile or the color space. Let's actually take a second and understand this. sRGB is a smaller color footprint than the Adobe RGB, but not a lot of people know what that very explicitly means. So let's take a look. This is the Adobe RGB color space. It is the color wheel, and then we actually need to understand that it includes saturation, which is why it's actually a three-dimensional object. So we have low saturation, high saturation, and then the color wheel spanning outwards. If I was to hold this for comparison against sRGB, we can see all of the color that's in Adobe RGB, but is not in sRGB, and that's this extra area on the outside. So we actually know what colors are missing out of sRGB. Now you might ask yourself why you would ever use sRGB if Adobe RGB is much larger. And the answer is that there are actually a lot of applications that only can use sRGB. The internet is programmed in sRGB. Your monitor in all likelihood is sRGB. Metal prints are sRGB. Canvas prints are sRGB. Most uh, smaller uh, printing uh, operations, so if you're printing uh, eight by 12s and smaller off of a wet chemistry process mini lab, those are sRGB. It literally can't utilize the larger color space. But things like a dye uh, injection printer uh, so a large scale actual printer that injects dyes, those tend to be Adobe RGB color space. So when you have your images printed by your local camera store, ask them which one of these two color spaces is accessible by that process and you'll get your best quality. Anyway, little tip for you there. Resolution is specifically for printing because it's pixels per inch. And so we can decide if we are interpolating up or down, uh, which does not add sharpness to an image. It simply makes sure we don't have actual pixelization. I tend to very, very seldom actually touch this. Instead, I can take the full image quality here or scale it back for web purposes. That's the way I tend to approach that issue. All right, scaling is going to be how we fix the actual dimension. So for instance, uh, if I want to make sure that my width is exactly five inches, I can do that uh, to make sure that my pixels per inch scales for the size of print that I want to do. 
And then lastly, once something has been created, I can say exactly what it automatically opens with. Little tip for you, if you have a PSD, it should automatically open up in Adobe Photoshop. Anything else, a JPEG or a TIFF, really should just open up in like a basic preview because that's not an editable or very editable file format. So having it auto open in Adobe Photoshop is a little bit weird. I tend to leave this set to none. Those are the options we have in export format and size as you create your recipes. All right, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.